She'll only be five minutes or so. Emma, well played. How was it playing in front of a crowd at the Royal Albert Hall? Welcome home. Thank you so much. I mean, it was amazing to play at home in front of everyone here. I felt it straight from the minute I walked out. It was an incredible atmosphere. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed playing here. So thank you all for coming very much. Um, now, did you, did you used to come here and watch tennis? You know, like watching the old guys tennis. To watch the singles matches, but all I wanted to see was Barami hold five balls in his hand. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. Yesterday, I got the opportunity to hit with him. So um, yeah, it's pretty surreal that I get to play on the same courts that I once watched growing yeah. up. Well, Mansoor is coming up in a, in a few minutes' time. We're looking forward to it. Listen, how was your holiday, by the way? Yeah, it was really good, actually. Six days, I just completely switched off and, and I started my pre-season um, this week on Tuesday but yeah I've been doing a lot of fitness and not so much tennis so I was a bit nervous coming out to play in front of everyone here. It didn't look nervous, you looked completely in control of it. I'm glad that you had a nice holiday. It's been quite a year hasn't it? Do, do you remember what you were doing this time last year? Yeah it is pretty surreal. I mean I remember my birthday last year I was at home, I think it was one of the lockdowns, or if not, I was just at home. Um, I didn't really, I was, wasn't playing, and uh, it's, it's pretty amazing how everything changed in one year, so it just shows like you keep plugging away at your own work and, and not looking around and staying focused, and, and anything can happen. And, and what are the plans now? How long does the training block last for? So right now I'm doing a pre-season and working hard on my fitness. Uh, as you can tell, I need to work on my sprints to the net as I was getting <laughs> drop shotted. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm doing that and then I'm heading out to the Middle East to finish my pre-season and then Christmas out there and flying to Australia from there on the 27th. <laughs> so. That's, that's the next goal is the Australian Open. Your strike rate in Grand Slam championships is quite good. <laughs> Played 2 1 1. It's absolutely, and the other one was fourth round at Wimbledon. It's been a surreal time. What, is, what has been um, the, the most surreal moment that, that, that you've had? In the Grand Slam? Or? Yeah, just, just off the court, on the court, anything, because your life has changed so much. I think that the moment I landed the ace on match point is probably the best moment of my life because... <laughs> because I... It was that one moment of disbelief and I've just done it and I didn't quite know what it was but um, it, it just... It was incredible and I was just speechless but I had an amazing time out there but for me I think playing here in Wimbledon the third round I think was was the biggest match of for me I feel like it was the turning point where I felt like oh my god I can actually be competitive here and that that moment that crowd that home support I felt um, out there it was it was an incredible experience and have you spoken to Leila Fernandez who you beat in the US Open final since you beat her we, we saw each other in America, and after the match, actually, we saw each other in the changing rooms, and yeah, she was very friendly, so um, very great opponent, and it was an incredibly tough match, so for her to be having a conversation after losing such a tough match like that, I thought was, was really big of her, and uh, yeah, I really respect her. And, and, and given that life changed in that moment after the ace was served, I mean, most people qualify, win a round or two if they do very well, but you went ahead and won it without dropping a set. It was kind of ridiculous and mad. It was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant to watch. I was just watching on the TV, but it was, it was fantastic. How have your friends dealt with, um, with your success? Because on a very profound level, everything changes, including how people see you, including friends, right? It was amazing. I, I've been actually a bit busy, so I haven't been able to really hang out with them so much. But uh, when I saw them again, like a couple are here today, and uh, it's, it's very nice just to, 
just to have that conversation, go to the same places that you used to go. And um, yeah, it's, it's just really, really cool. And uh, I, but I have my parents who, who still like, they were telling me off yesterday morning, big time. So, I mean, <laughs> nothing changes. What, what did you do wrong? I said I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> And which one told you off? Both. Both. Really? Yeah. They're just on you, huh? Yeah. Well, that's good. They're never going to let you fly too high. Um, so I, I think I saw you, you were in Bromley High Street in like some tea shop having a, ch a chat with, you, with this new coach. And people, I mean, people follow you with cameras the whole time now. How are you coping with the attention? I hope you're enjoying it. You seem great. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm just going about my business. Like, I'm taking the train in sometimes and uh, doing the same journeys I used to because for me, I feel like I'm the exact same person and uh, I'm just going to go about everything I used to do. I don't see why I should change things that, that got me that title. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just still enjoying what I'm doing. Um. Clearly, you're very comfortable with, with the microphone in your hand. Have you prepared a speech for when you win BBC Sports Personality? <laughs> no, I mean, definitely not. I'm rooting for Lewis in the, in the race, so... <laughs> That's another one you've spoken to, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he, he's been such a good like role model for me in terms of you know, just helping me out and through these next stages. So he, he's a really cool person. And um, yeah, it's very close right now in the race, eight points, so we'll see. Eight points in the sports personality race, or F1. <laughs> are you, you're not monitoring the votes, are you? <laughs> well, there are so many exciting things uh, ahead. Are, are, sorry, are you here for Christmas or are you away? Oh no, you're gonna head away. Um, the very best of luck in, in, uh, in what's the next year, 2022? It all goes so fast, doesn't it? It seems to sort of uh, lose track. What are your expectations, lastly, for, for next year? Yeah, of course. I mean, for me, my expectations of myself are just to keep improving. And, and I want to look back at the end of the year and see that I, I made gains in any sort of area. And I know that, for me, it's going to take a lot of patience to, to get to where I want to be and smooth out that consistency. So I think that's probably the biggest goal, but um, it's just building like robustness physically and it'll be my first calendar year on the tour. So it will be a cool experience to have them play a full schedule. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward to learning and I'm still quite young. So yeah, we'll, we'll learn and get better. Well, you're the youngest in the top 20. I think the, the only teenager. Um, the very best of luck, Emma. We, we've enjoyed the run that's got you here so far and all your successes. We don't expect great success every time. Please enjoy yourself and, and every ball that you hit may be uh, a, a good one. It was wonderful to watch you uh, today. Ladies and gentlemen, Emma Radicano. Thank you so much.